Hi Year 7s, this screencast is going to help you with your assessment task for this particular unit uncovering the past. It's called History Mystery. In the project you'll be required to fill in a case file on Mungo Man and Mungo Lady. There is a lot of information we need to cover with research but hopefully this screencast will show you how to fill everything in correctly and you can get an A. Feel free to take a screenshot of any of these screens if you're struggling with anything on your assignment. This video is definitely here to help you. Before we get into the nitty gritty details of the History Misty project, there's one very important thing you need to do. Let me move the screen up to show you. See where it says investigator's name and squad? You need to fill this in with your name and your class so that your teacher knows who to give the A to. So important. Remember, your name, your class, your mark. When you hear this sound, it means we're turning over to a new workbook. So follow along with me, guys. This is a reproduction of Giovanni Coselli's image of life at Lake Mungo. Caselli was a man of many talents. He was an archaeologist, a painter, and a historian. His artifacts and artwork are going to be very useful later on in the project. For now, though, let's just look and move on. All right, peeps, let's see if we can. Solve the mystery of the Mungo Man. Or I, I admit it, I'm definitely not a rapper, but let me break this down for you. In the first section of the case file, you need to produce the summary. This means you're going to need to give us details about the geographic location, the human subjects of the mystery, and background information that you think might be relevant to the case. It'll need to be written in paragraph style in this section here. You can see at the top half, you need to insert a picture of the Mungo Man's skeleton or an artist impression of the Mungo people there. You'll need to include a caption below this image saying what the image is of along with the reference of your source. In any kind of historical work, it's always important to acknowledge your source with a bibliographic reference. This is where this information goes and it's important that your teacher sees it's there. Want to know what my handy pro tip is? <laughs> See what I did there? Handy? Miss Hands? Get it? I crack myself up. But seriously, write the summary at the end. That way you can use the information you've already gathered from the rest of the project in the actual summary paragraph here. It'll make your answer more well-rounded and much, much more detailed for your teacher. With this in mind, it's pretty easy to say that you might be setting yourself up for an A. Fingers crossed! Section 2 of your case file is all about the geographic region. Now I suggest using Google Maps to find an image of the Lake Mungo or Willandra Lakes region here. Now it is important to note that the description here requires you to know what bolts is. Don't worry boys, I'll make sure I give you a handout explaining border operation, legend, title, scale and source if you don't understand them. You'll also need to put a caption down the bottom here showing where you got this information from. At the bottom of the page, you're required to write another paragraph here. This time, instead of summarising what the section's about, you'll need to tell us what life at the Willandra Lakes and Lake Mungo region was like approximately 40,000 years ago. The best source of information you'll find for this is at www.visitmungo.com.au. There you'll find a video showing what life was like at Lake Mungo and the changes that occurred over time. My handy pro tip for section 2? Make sure you visit the website at the bottom of the screen and in your writing use adjectives and plenty of them. Describe the landscape. Was it incredibly dry? Was it hostile? Use those descriptive words that make images in people's heads. This will get you better marks. Section 3, I promise you, is super easy, 
Basically, all you need to do is put the following pictures into the correct chronological sequence by numbering the boxes 1 to 6. Wondering what my handy pro tip for this section might be? Well, it's pretty simple. You need to use your logic. Think. Clearly. Slowly. What has to happen first? Do you record all of the objects found? Or should you mark the area you're digging in into a square? Plotting is the correct terminology. Do you need to discover where there are archaeological remains? Or should you have experts analyse objects in detail first? This is up to you, but if you think, you'll be able to get an A, no problems. Still working within section 3, you can see here that we have a timeline. Question A simply requires you to put a giant X marks the spot exactly where the death of Mungo Man and Mungo Lady would have occurred on this timeline. Question B asks you to write a full sentence explaining when the history mystery began. Which era was this in? And question C needs you to look at the timeline very carefully. In which era were the dinosaurs the most dominant animals on the planet? What do you think my handy pro tips might be? Have a think. Firstly, you need to be accurate. Please put a mark as close as possible to the exact time you can. Then, use a full sentence to answer those questions. There's a reason it says, write your answer using full sentences for B and C. You need to do so that, so that your teacher can understand that you know what you're talking about. As a reminder, a historical hypothesis is an educated guess about what might have happened in the past, and your case file section 4 requires you to build a historical hypothesis, both about Mungo Man and about Mungo Lady. If you can't remember much of that video that was shown in class, perhaps you need to visit that wonderful website again, www.visitmungo.com.au. This might give you just a little more insight into a historical hypothesis of your own. In the sections here and here, you'll be required to write your hypothesis. It's important to jump on the net and see what information you can find, but essentially you need to list some of the possible reasons why he or she was buried in this way. So, the handy pro tip for case section 4? It's quite simple, really. Firstly, visit the Lake Mungo site, www.visitmungo.com.au. Make sure you check out all of the reasons why Mungo Man might have been carefully arranged in the way that he was. Secondly, be literate. Make sure you're writing in full sentences with the sentence starter that's already written for you here. Some of the possible reasons why he was buried in this way are, and then write from there. Secondly, be smart about it. A hypothesis is a historical, educated guess about what might have happened in the past. As of right now, we're halfway through your project on the history mystery, so let's push on and get you that A you deserve. Section 5 of your case file is all about dating the evidence. Uh-uh, hold up, not that kind of dating, remember? Part A of Section 5 asks, why do you think there might be different estimates about the age of Mungo Man and Mungo Lady? It also has that prompt, write your answer using full sentences. Think back to the dating techniques screencast and the work we did in class. Why is it that some dating techniques are more accurate than others? Use these thoughts as the basis for your answer in this section. Question B, however, is going to require a little bit of research. In column A of this table, we can see that this is the method of dating. We have stratigraphy, radiocarbon or C14 dating, potassium argon dating, and dendrochronology. In column B, you need to list a few examples of the types of things that you would use this method to date with. So for example, dendrochronology, you would use this method to date trees or wooden artifacts. In column C here, you need to briefly describe how it works or the scientific process behind it. And then, in column D, list the main strengths and weaknesses of this particular dating method. Sounds simple enough, right? Definitely easy A material. 
But as usual, I've got a handy pro tip to help you get an A in this section. Please, please, please make sure you use full sentences when answering any of these questions. And secondly, Google is going to be your best friend. Find a brief summary of each of the dating methods here on the screen. Then be succinct or brief in describing how you would use the method to date particular artifacts, how it works and its main strengths or weaknesses. These brief are all you're going to need in such small boxes. Don't worry about writing too much, it won't be necessary. Section 6 of your case file is all about the examination of primary and secondary sources. In this case, we're going to be looking at that painting by Giovanni Coselli on the inside of the front cover of our booklets. Activity A is as simple as watching and learning. Read the list of items on the left hand side and then decide whether you can see them in Caselli's work. If they've been used, you need to place a tick or a cross in this column here. If we can indeed see them in Caselli's painting, explain where it's been used or where the reference occurs in this column here. You can see from the example here that it only needs to be a simple one sentence kind of explanation. Nothing too fancy at all. So chickens, what do you think comes next? That's right, it's my handy pro tip. There's only one of them for case file section 6, and that's stop, look, and think. Read the description of the archaeological evidence found at Lake Mungo really carefully. Then, look even more carefully at Caselli's painting. If it was used, explain how it's been used in a simple sentence in Caselli's work. That's all there is to it. Easy, eh? Definitely a smiley face moment. Part C of section 6 is all about the footprints left behind in one of the dried up lake beds. All you need to do for this page is look closely again. Easy, huh? No handy tip this time! Part D gets just a little bit trickier though and you're going to need to do some flicking backwards and forwards between the pages. Column A of this table lists the type of footprint evidence found in the picture. Column B means you need to record your idea of the significance or the meaning of the evidence. And finally, in column C, we're going to need to turn the page and summarise what the experts say this means. My handy pro tip is pretty much exactly the same as it was at the start of this section. Stop, look and think. Look closely at the picture of the footprints and read the expert testimony really carefully. Then think before you put your answers down. And please, 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 please use full sentences when you're writing your answers. It makes you look so much smarter and it's easier for your teacher to read and therefore she or he is probably more likely to give you that A you deserve. This page simply contains the expert analysis of what those footprints actually are. Read this section carefully and translate the information into column C of the previous page. The last few pages of your case file are all about conservation recommendations. As a part of the History Mystery Investigation Team, you're required to make an educated choice or decision about the conservation of Mungo Man and Mungo Lady. Here we've given you two contrasting or different viewpoints to help you think about the arguments and issues. You need to read them really carefully. Testimony A is all about the reburial of the ancient remains. It's all about respect for the history and the past of these people. Whereas Testimony B here says we need to keep them unburied for future study. That way we can continue to learn great things from these particular books. Once you've read both of these arguments, it's important that you form your own decision. Let's turn over the page and have a look. You can see here that this is a table on the conservation outcomes for Mungo Man and Mungo Lady. On the left hand side here is a list of possible solutions. Then, you My pro tip is exactly the same as it was before. Stop, look and think. Make sure you read everything carefully that's available to you. 
List one argument to support the solution and one argument against it. And please use full sentences. Remember, they make you look smarter than you actually are and will help you get that all-important A. But I promise we're nearly done, so let's turn the page and push on. This is the last piece of work you need to do in your History Mystery case file. You have to write a final recommendation on the concept of the man and Mungo lady as a history mystery investigator. Essentially, all you need to do is write a paragraph explaining your opinion, using evidence by your position. Having looked closely at the expert evidence and the arguments for and against possible conservation solutions, you need to make a decision yourself. What do you believe we should be doing with Mungo Man and Mungo Lady? Write it here. Oh, look at what just popped up on the side of the screen. It's the same handy pro tips that you've had for the last little while. This is all about stopping, looking, and thinking really hard about the information that you've come across so far. Don't forget you've got places like www.visitmungo.com.au and the video and Google and Wikipedia and all of these resources at your disposal. Use them. Use them to help you make that decision because you need to make a recommendation on the conservation of Lake Mungo. Lastly, you also need to write a paragraph, which means you need to use those smart-sounding full sentences. I'm determined to get you that A, so help me out by making sure you're literate and write properly. All that's left for us to do now is turn over to the back page and have a look at the criteria. So go on, go ahead. With the exception of the incorrect mark bar, which is this bit up here, which you need to ignore, this is what your teachers are going to be marking you on. Here you can see that each of the sections get its own mark out of five. Five being the highest, one being the lowest, and zero if you haven't done it at all. Your total grade will be found down here on the right hand side of the page. If you've answered all of the case file sections as best you can, I'm expecting to see a lot of ticks in the four and five column. Don't forget to go back and do that summary though, that's a whole criteria by itself. What do you think my handy pro tips are going to be about the total? You're probably right. Stop, look and think. Check out all of the information available to you, look at the pictures really closely and think about your answers before you write them down. Even once you have written them down, Think about them again, redraft them if necessary, and make them absolutely perfect. Then I can guarantee that you're going to be getting an A or an A plus for your very first humanities assignment. Well, well, boys, aren't you lucky? Of course, this has been another hilarious screencast from Miss Hands, and I hope that you'll find it helpful for your project. Remember, you can always hit me up on Edmodo if you have any other questions, but I'm looking forward to receiving these back on the first day of next term. Good luck, I wish you all the best and I hope you have a fantastic holiday.